Okay, so in this video, we're just going to pick up where we left off in the last video in our conversation about costs. And now, as we know what we know about total cost, which is that it is a sum of fixed costs and variable costs, I want us to now start thinking of the idea of the averages of each of these, which we know that average is just total value divided by quantity, so the number of something. So if we were to apply that to the cost that we have at this point, Total cost Tc divided by quantity Q, the number of goods we produced, that gives us our ATC, our average total cost. If we divide up all our fixed costs, so the total fixed cost by quantity, that gives us the average fixed cost. And then we can do the same with variable costs to get average variable cost. And you might see these labels like Tc for total cost, ATC for average total cost, in different questions or diagrams, and now you know what they mean. So now we have a bunch of terms associated with costs. We have total, fixed, and variable costs, as well as the averages of each of these. And now I want us to start thinking about how each of these average cost values would look if we were to plot them out as a curve. So let's have the x-axis as a quantity of a good and the y-axis as the cost. And let's think about how each cost would change as the quantity of goods increase. So let's actually start with our average fixed cost. So for fixed cost, which we used rent for the bakery building as an example in the last video, it is fixed and it doesn't change with the number of goods we make. And so it becomes the same amount of cost that gets divided by a larger number of goods to get the average fixed cost as the quantity of goods increases. So the average fixed cost will decrease as quantity of goods increase. So the curve will show a decrease like this. This is the average fixed cost curve. And what about average variable cost? Well, unlike fixed costs, our variable cost actually changes with the number of goods we make, so it becomes a little more complex. So I'll actually show the shape of the average variable cost curve first. And this is what a typical average variable cost curve looks like. And let's actually take a look at what's happening here. The first part of the curve shows a decrease in average variable cost as the quantity increases. And this is because of something called increasing returns to scale. And I don't think this phrase increasing returns to scale is explicitly noted in the syllabus. I'm not sure. But just the idea of it helps us understand the shape of the average variable cost curve. And increasing returns to scale is when additional inputs result in a proportionally greater increase in output. For example, let's say you initially had one baker and one oven. The wage of the baker and the cost of the oven are different variable costs. And you get five cakes as an output. And now we're going to double our input. So we get two bakers and two ovens, doubling our costs. And what we end up seeing is that the output increases not to 10 cakes, but actually to 15 cakes. So it triples instead. And just in the context of the situation, we can kind of start to think about why that would be the case. Let's say the bakers start helping each other out, or one baker specializes in this while the other in decorating the cake, or you know you need different oven temperatures and then you can do it at the same time. Any of those reasons could lead to a proportionally greater increase in output than input. And this is the idea of increasing returns to scale that can help us understand why our average variable cost curve would at least in this first part start sloping down. Because as our variable costs increase with us adding in more input, the quantity of our outputs is going faster and thus the average is able to fall. And so I think the question we can have now is that why does it start sloping upwards here? The curve looks like it seems to reach somewhat of a minimum point and then the variable cost actually starts to increase. And the idea used to explain this, which I think is slightly more explicit in the syllabus, is the law of diminishing marginal returns. And basically, the idea is that as we increase input and our productivity increases, output grows faster than input, 
we see a decrease in average variable cost. Then we reach some optimal point with the lowest average variable cost. And then an additional input actually starts to result in a proportionally lower increase in output, and then our average variable cost actually starts to increase. And the example that my economics teacher used, which I thought made a lot of sense to me, was keeping up with the cake example. Imagine that beyond a certain number of bakers, where the bakers are super coordinated, they're very productive, you start to add in more bakers, and people start like bumping into each other, it's very crowded in the bakery, it becomes more challenging to properly distribute tasks, and the number of cakes produced won't increase as much, as dramatically as it did before when another baker is added. And that sort of scenario just captures the gist of what's happening in the law of diminishing marginal returns, that at some point, an additional input results in a smaller increase in output, which then makes it more intuitive as to why our average variable cost would start to increase. So, now we understand the shapes of our average fixed cost and average variable cost curves, which only leaves our average total cost left. And the awesome part is that total cost was simply a sum of our fixed costs and variable costs, right? So actually pause the video and try to guess what our average fixed cost curve would look like. And if you guessed it right, it really is just the average variable cost curve shifted up by the amount of the average fixed cost curve. So now we know what the cost curves of each average cost look like. And I will wrap up this video here and talk about one last idea related to cost, the concept of marginal cost in the next video.